1500 points of the most aggressive Space Marine chapter, the Space Wolves. This army has been painted by Connor, one of the artists here at Siege, and features a whole host of exciting Space Wolves miniatures, including a Redemptor Dreadnought, we have a Repulsor tank, we have an Invicta tactical warsuit, we've got some Aggressors, some Hellblasters, we've got some Reavers, some Incursors, and some Infiltrators, we have some Intercessors, and then leading from the front, we have a Lieutenant and also the mighty Ragnar Blackbane. So let's jump in and have a look at the Redemptor Dreadnought to start off with. I've always absolutely loved Dreadnoughts in any edition of 40k, right back from the very first Castaferum pattern box Dreadnought all the way through to this new chonky bad boy, the Redemptor. And it looks super good in the classic blue grey livery of the Space Wolves. I absolutely love the blue colour from second edition, really sort of warms the heart of my childhood. Uh, and it's nice to see that our client has selected that colour for their army. Again, you can see all of the little details on this Redemptor are fully painted, all the little lenses, dials, screens. We've got this beautiful, beautiful blue plasma glow just on the, uh, the plasma cannon here as you can see. Um, all the transfers are applied across the surface of the armoured sarcophagus and armour panel. And you've got the Space Wolves livery, you've got some pack markings, uh, you've got some other runes and things on this shoulder pad here, that fanged skull which is really nice. Uh, all the metallics have got loads of sharp consistent edge highlighting across all the details. If we look around the back as well you'll see you've got that Mechanica symbol split there with that black and white sort of half and half pattern there, really nicely they executed super cleanly. Um, all of the edges on the model across every bit of detail have got multiple stages of highlighting as you would expect with us here at Siege for our bronze level which this Redemptor is. You can see on the front you've got Fenris written on that scroll just on the front of the miniature as well so you've got that sort of really refined writing just on that scroll on the armoured sarcophagus. Again, really beautiful miniature, very imposing and a great starting point for this showcase. So next, let's jump in and have a look at the armoured transport from the force. We have the Repulsor. This army hasn't got loads of tanks, but what it does have is a beautifully painted Repulsor to take some of the troops around. And as you can see, uh, we've got a really massively armoured form on the Repulsor, really iconic shape. It nods quite nicely to sort of like Land Raider a little bit with that front, as you can see there. Um, but Connor's done a great job across every aspect of detail on there. All the lights, screens, dials, lenses, the extra sort of glass areas around the cupola on the middle of the tank. Um, you've got every bit fully painted to an exemplary finish, as you'd expect with us here at Siege. And again, this is at our bronze level. Um, if we move around, you can see all the transfers and things have been applied across all the armour panelling on the sides. We've also got some pack markings and things here on the flanks and also some runes. You've got the number four there just on the front there as well to denote that it's the number four repulsor from the army. Um, again, really sharp, refined edging through multiple stages across every single aspect of detail. The launchers, the metals, the armour colour, even the lights and dials have all got edging done on the specific parts that are raised, which is great. Um, the rich gold detailing as well, so things like the Aquila here, that sort of uh, symbol to the Allfather and in the Imperium, uh, just sort of painted in a really rich, warm gold that contrasts really nicely against the colder blue tone of the armour panelling. Um, and one of the things that I do really like is all of the lights having that yellow hue to them as well, just that really rich, warm colour, just to contrast massively against the other colours that are on there and really denote those little details. It draws the eye really easily uh, and just makes you read those specific parts of the model quite Quite nicely as well but that's this awesome repulsor to take some of the infantry of this force around the table. So following on from the repulsor let's have a look at the Invicta tactical warsuits. I really love the open crew compartment on the Invicta tactical warsuit. Seeing that Primaris Space Marine pilot on the inside really helps to note this miniature visually from the Redemptor that obviously has a fallen brother within its sarcophagus. Again, you can see every aspect of detail on here. It's sharply, meticulously painted through multiple stages of highlighting across all the details, metals, lenses, uh, even on the uh, sort of uh, golden brazen part of the front of the flamer there, you can see still has four edge highlighting across every aspect of its edging. Again, consistent transfer application across all the armor panel. You've got a consistent um, uh, symbol, obviously, for the pack marking here. So you've got another sort of pack marking here on just this flank. And again, you've got those lovely, vibrant, bright space wall transfers just there. Uh, but again, one of the things I do really like is the sort of red knee pad here. Just again, a splash of another contrasting colour to the blue and to the yellow. Uh, part of that primary colour triad on this miniature. Just to really show, uh, again, a little bit of detail on there. A specific deed or something that this Invicta potentially has done with a marking. Uh, something really nice just to draw the eye to that specific part of the model. If we have a look at the pilot of the Invicta, he has been painted exactly the same in the sense of consistency and quality of execution as the actual suit. Uh, but again, 
you got the yellow and red shoulder pads just there on his flanks to denote obviously the uh, Space Force chapter on one side and also his individual pack markings just on the other side. But again, a really lovely painted Invicta Tactical War suit to march forward for the Allfather. So moving on from the Invicta Tactical War suit, let's jump into the vast swathe of infantry and start with the aggressors. Clad in Gravis armor, we have this aggressive aggressor, uh, really lovely presented model advancing forward there, just ready to scorch some enemies of the Imperium with those Flamestorm gauntlets. If we move the model around, you'll see that white and black dagged kind of pack marking that's on that shoulder pad there, and that flows through the unit, so that is present on all of the miniatures in the aggressor squads. If we move around the other side, you'll see it's actually got one of the molded Space Wolf uh, iconography shoulder pads. We've got a little rune there, little green gem on there, which is really nice. Uh, little trinkets and things like that really add that Space Wolf kind of heritage and feel to the models. Uh, and it's a really easy way of making non sort of iconography miniatures just work really well within a uh, specific chapter force. Um, Connor's done a great job of painting every little detail on here, include the canisters with the uh, sort of Promethium in them. You can see that lovely sort of bronze color that's just there on those. Uh, all the fuel lines and everything fully painted in the lovely black, uh, just a contrast against the rest of the miniature. And then again, all the details, that rich gold on the sort of the quiller on the chest plate, plus also the trinkets and things just hanging from the waist. Uh, a really beautiful miniature uh, and just ready to take the assault forward for the Imperium. So moving on from the aggressors, let's jump in and have a look at another infantry unit, a bit more stealthy. Let's have a look at the infiltrators. Leading from the front, we have this infiltrator sergeant, uh, just commanding other forces forward. As you'll see here, there's more relaxed pose, which I really like that uh, sort of carbine bolter just held by the foregrip, which is lovely. Uh, Connor's done a great job picking out all the lenses on the gun as well. These uh, carbines have got loads of different scopes and lenses quite stealthy sort of advancing to infiltrating units so uh, having lots of different scopes or spectral vision sort of optics is quite normal on those type of infantry and uh, I like what Connor's done in just picking those out with that red again a real strong primary color triadic scheme here with the blue yellow and red um, just really well presented uh, got the bare head there with all the details painted eyes teeth everything as you'd expect with us here at siege um, and as we move around you can see the sharp consistent edge highlighting on every aspect of the details that's the leather we've got the armor we've got all the metallic We've got absolutely everything presented in a really clean fashion as per our client's request. Really sharply executed that freehand on that shoulder pad there, those uh, sort of pack markings that are on this infiltrator unit, and that is the sergeant from the infiltrators. Just to show you consistency within the unit, let's pull forward another one for you to have a look at. So pulling forward the Medicaid from the unit, just so you can see this model, really nice miniature again here with some extra colorways, obviously with that Medicaid arm there. You've got the Helix Gauntlet that he's wielding there, just with those vials with green liquid flowing inside. Uh, you've got the lovely little green screen on there as well. Now this miniature, along with the rest of the infiltrators, are painted to our bronze level. That gives you a really good example of what you can expect with our minimum box art style level here at Siege. If we move around the back again, you can see again the exact same consistency on all the aspects of detail, armor, leather, metallics, and every part of the miniature. Gets that attention to detail to present a really refined miniature for your collection. Again, the model has pack markings on here, and they are really done to add a lot of interest to the miniatures, individual heraldry, uh, just, just to denote the units, both visually on the tabletop and also in your cabinet. Again, I love the open pose. Looks like he's just scanning for another, another sort of fallen brother to kind of aid or help potentially. But again, a really lovely presented miniature. Moving on to another infantry unit in the army, let's have a look at some plasma toting hell blasters. Leading from the front, we have this Hellblaster Sergeant just commanding his brothers forward to annihilate another enemy. Uh, one of the things I really like about this miniature and I wanted to pull him out for was the face that's on him. It's really well painted uh, with subtle blending and shading across the various sort of sculpted details. He's even got some scars and things which have just got some subtle soft shading around it to really denote those. The hair as well has also got a lot of stippling done on it as well. So you can see that obviously it's got a bit of depth and texture to it, which just shows again the attention and care that we place into the miniatures that we do paint for our clients here at Siege. If you move around, you'll see obviously he has got a sculpted shoulder pad from the Space Wolf upgrade pack that has little totems and trinkets and stones and things on there, which has all been painted really nicely. Even the buttons and things on the wrist mounted gauntlets there are also painted and picked out in silver, which is quite nice. Uh, one of the things that I do really like about the model is the, uh, we haven't spoken about it previously, but it's actually the basing. It's quite desaturated, so it's got this kind of like ash waste kind of basing scheme here, just to contrast the bright armor color uh, on the actual space walls. A really nice sort of balance there, just on the base between the miniature. The other thing that I do really like as well, and just wanted to show, is just the freehanded text that's on that shoulder pad there. We have Valentin uh, as the name of this sergeant. Uh, just again, you've got that pack marking that's just been freehanded really, really sharply and refined on that shoulder pad. Again, adding a lot of interest to the miniatures. 
uh, telling a little bit of story about this unit, just the unique iconography that's on there. Uh, and again, just really nicely painted across the surface of that shoulder pad. We've got green plasma on this guy as well and the rest of the unit. So really nice green plasma glow that's just been done on that uh, sort of uh, plasma weapon there, as you'll see. It works really nicely with the rest of the miniature and just adds that kind of energized feel to him. Uh, but that's this sergeant from the Hellblasters. So moving on from the Hellblasters in this force, let's jump in and have a look at the Reavers. So starting with the Sergeant of these Reavers, uh, I wanted to pull this guy forward specifically, purely because he's got some extra little details on him from the Hounds of Morkai set or upgrade pack, um, adding those little Space Wolf trinkets just both on the waist and also on the necklace there, just dangling as he's uh, drawing his blade to some foul enemy. Um, I do like the fact that Connor's used uh, a sort of ginger kind of reddish hair for this guy as well, very much fitting with the Space Wolf kind of like background and law and artwork um, and just really sort of sells that Viking-esque kind of feel. Uh, now one thing with the Hounds of Morkai is their armour is actually slightly darker and to show you that I'll pull forward one of the infiltrators just so you can see the difference between the uh, Reaver here with the uh, sort of Hounds of Morkai kind of lineage and colourway and then we've also got a normal infiltrator here just to show you the difference in the actual colour. And the uh, the shoulder pads uh, that has the, um, the pack marking plus also the trim on the uh, chapter one actually is the original sort of blue gray kind of color and the rest of the miniature is slightly darker. Uh, but that's just something to denote this uh, sort of Reaver unit as the Hounds of Morkai. Uh, again, Connor's done a great job on this miniature and just using a slightly different color scheme, but keeping it within the overall force, which I think is just real good use of skill and ability there. So following on from the Reavers, let's jump in and have a look at the humble intercessor and pull forward one of those. Demonstrating the use of those Space Wolf upgrades even further, we have the intercessor. You couldn't have a force like this without some intercessors. Having uh, this sergeant here just advancing forward using that uh, Space Wolf double-sided chain sword, which I think is really great. You've got the uh, savage teeth on either side of, of that chain sword, which is just a great weapon. Um, we've also got a Space Wolf helmet there with that little runestone gem on the center of the brow, which I think is a great little detail. Um, and you've also got a few extra little bits there just dangling from that shoulder pad, as you can see there. Um, with little stones and things, just obviously the runic markers and things, uh, and the sculpted Space Wolf symbol just on the shoulder pad. Um, choosing to use his blade, not his gun, which in true Space Wolf fashion there, as you can see as well, which I think is great use of posing. Uh, again, posing really does sell the uh, sort of like heraldry and sort of feel of a chapter, which I think uh, Connor's done a great job on this miniature. As we move around to the back, you'll see all the sharp refined edge highlighting that's been done across every aspect of detail, the armor, the metals, uh, and also the leather as well. Uh, and for a bronze level model, which this is, it shows you a real good idea of what to expect with us here at Siege. Uh, if we move around the front, you'll see that lovely, rich, golden Aquila that's just on the front there. And I love the amount of tonal variance that's just on the metallics in this uh, in this project, just to show that real kind of rich heraldry that's just on the chest. Uh, and that's a sergeant from this intercessor unit. And as there's 10 of them, I thought I would pull forward another intercessor for you to have a look at. We've got one here advancing with their combat knife drawn in a very Space Wolf kind of fashion. Uh, again, I do love the use of the bear head here. And we've got one that's got some scars on the face as well. And Connor's done a great job of painting that flesh with subtle shading, subtle highlighting. We've got the stippling on the hair as well, just to show depth and texture. The scars have got a little bit of a reddish hue to them as well, just to show they're a bit fresh, which is quite nice. Could have been done during this campaign or maybe just before. Um, but again, really nicely executed. Uh, again, just across every part of the miniature. We've even got the word Femris written on the scroll on the gun as well, just to add on that Space Wolf flavor. Uh, but a really, really clean and beautiful execution on these miniatures. So let's have a look at the final infantry unit from the army. We have some incursors. Let's pull forward one to have a look at. Drawing his sidearm in what is an amazing pose, we have this incursor here, another sneaky infiltrator unit. Uh, I do absolutely love this miniature uh, and all the extra sort of optics and targeting arrays that are both on the gun and also on the backpack. Um, I love the use of the yellow high contrast and red pack markings just on the shoulder there. Uh, just adds a lot of personality to the miniature and uh, uses a really strong color theory based complementary relationship, which is just great. Um, the other thing I like is the almost X-Men style visor that he's got there on his face as well. Uh, I don't think it shoots laser beams, but one can hope. 
Um, but a really, really lovely quality of execution across all the aspects of detail. A slightly closed pose with the arm across the chest, but still getting a really refined finish on both the details, like the little skull on the chest in gold there, as you can see. Um, every optic and lens on all the guns uh, on the backpack done with that really nice, vibrant, warm red that you can see there. The leather work as well, I've spoken about it a little bit, but again, a really nice brown, warm tone, just to contrast in sort of temperature as well on the miniature. You've got the colder armor and you've got those warmer bits of leather, which is just nice. Um, metallics as well, just really highlighted cleanly, just to pick out all those edges and show the vibrancy of the metallics. Um, and little like, splashes of gold, like on the sort of scabbard there on the uh, on the knives that he's got at his waist. But a brilliant miniature in a really great pose. So finally, we're going to look at the characters. You've been waiting long enough. Uh, we've got two awesome characters to lead this Space Wolves army. And what Space Wolf army would not be complete without a lieutenant? Haldor Ice Pelt, formerly known as, I don't think his name is still used, but we'll call him by his launch name. We've got this amazing Space Wolf Lieutenant just charging forward with an axe, the weapon of a Space Wolf. Um, again, Connor's done a fantastic job on this miniature. Just there is so many little details across the surface of the sculpt, both on the axe, the little rune on the top of the blade. We've got the uh, little sort of wolf skull just on the forward van brace. Um, you've got the glowing little runes just on that axe there as well. Um, but just really high attention to detail across every aspect of detail. If you move uh, Howl all round, you can see that red rune just in the center of the chest as well, painted as a gem. We've got some individual heraldry just on the knee pad there, that high contrast yellow and black. Uh, the belt that he's wearing there with that bone work all picked out and painted really cleanly. Uh, again, high contrast sort of value there with the uh, tone of that bone just against the surround, plus also the blue armor next to it. If we move him around the back, you will see you got the sculpted Space Wolf shoulder pad on there. Got another runic gem just on the center of the backpack on that power plant there. Uh, and we've got this really nice wolf pelt that's just dangling down as well. And I like the use of color that Connor's put on there just to break up the miniature and add a softness of feel to that cape there just with the use of less subtle highlight stages, which is really, really nice. Um, as we move the model around, you'll see on the shoulder pad, we've got a sort of metallic plaque there on the pad with the word death very fitting on there for a... Uh, a Space Wolf, which um, is known as Executioners. So that's very fitting. Um, again, I like the use of white for the hair as well that Haldor's got. Really marks him out and stands out that detail on there, that white kind of like ponytail kind of thing that he's got that's, that's joined to his, uh, his beard as well. He's got a lovely white beard showing the age uh, of a veteran Marine. Uh, but again, a beautiful miniature just to be one of the HQs of this Space Wolf army. Moving on from Haldor Ice Pelt, we have the man, the myth, the legend, we have Ragnar Blackmane. The newest miniature for the Space Wolf range, we have the fantastic sculpt of Ragnar Blackmane. Uh, brilliant miniature. Doesn't just come with a tactical rock, he comes with a tactical Aquila. That's how loyalist he is. Uh, as we move him around, you can see that beautiful, open, aggressive, uh, sort of charging pose, which is very fitting for the character that Ragnar is, with that massive mane and top knot there. Uh, really painted exquisitely all the hair details with more subtle highlight stages just to show a bit more softness of material. And that's very much the same across the uh, the sort of black mane that he's got on his uh, sort of wolf pelt. As we move around, you can see obviously the subtlety of the highlight stages. Still significant amounts of tone and the color added on there, but just not so stark in jump, just to really add a softness of feel, as I've mentioned. Um, and as we move around, you'll see every little detail painted to a super, super refined, high quality of finish. That includes all the gem work, all the golds and metals have got sharp, refined highlighting and tonal work done on there as well. We've got all the little runic kind of charms and things just hanging across that uh, sort of cape there, as you can see. And if we move him round, you'll see the facial detail, that snarl, that aggression that Ragnar is displaying on his face. And Connor's done an absolutely fantastic job of rendering that and painting the softness of the sort of skin, plus also the subtlety of the kind of folds and depth of the skin as well. Uh, not to mention a kind of a reddish kind of hint to it, just to show that blood flowing through that snarl as he's charging forward. Um, and I like the use of the red for the top knot kind of like banding as well. Um, I think again, just real strategic placement of color, just a section, little bits of detail. We can't forget to talk about Frostfang, the uh, massive chainsaw, almost eviscerator that, um, that Ragnar wields. You'll see all the runic kind of markings and things across the surface of its cowling have all been painted as well, just to add that kind of like detail on there. Uh, but overall, a beautiful miniature to lead this aggressive pack of Space Wolves across the tabletop, or to look beautiful in a cabinet. 
uh, that's a fantastic miniature. So there we have it, Ragnar joins the rest of the Space Wolves to lead from the front in their charge. Now, if you like this army showcase, we do have many more here on our YouTube channel, so please do not hesitate in subscribing. We also upload new videos, including showcases, on a weekly basis. If you'd like to get a commission with us here at Siege Bit for a character or an army like this, then please head to the description of this video where there's a link to our website where you can get a quote from us. From all the team here at Siege, and myself, a massive thank you for watching the video. I'll see you very soon on the next one for the Allfather and Russ.